Okay. Um, our next topic is about percentage compensation. I discussed that already, but um, I hope that you can you will find this video useful. Before we proceed to percentage composition, allow me first to describe a chemical formula. And from that formula, we're looking into uh, how many percent will be the element present in that formula or um, the percentage composition of the elements in the formula. So chemical formulas of compounds, they give the relative number of atoms or moles of each element in a formula unit. So always a whole number ratio because this is based on the law of definite proportion, which means to say when we say water, when we say water, that is um, H2O2 is to one, okay? And it's different from H2O2, that is two is, two is to two, that means of a different substance. Okay, so whole number ratio of the, of the chemical formula or of the substance, take note. Next, um, example, two atoms of oxygen for every one atom of nitrogen. Or one mole of nitrogen means two moles of oxygen atoms to every one mole of nitrogen atom, okay? So if we know, if, if we know or can determine the relative number of moles for each element, we can determine a formula for the compound. And um, there are two types of formula. We have the empirical formula, okay? And the molecular formula. Empirical formula are always, uh, um, what I mean here, ionic formula are always empirical formula. The formula of a compound that expresses the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms present. Okay. While molecular formula, the formula that states the actual number of each kind of atom found in one uh, molecule of a compound. For example, um, always no Fn. Uh, 204. This is not an empirical formula because it is not in a smallest whole number ratio. Wherein you can still simplify sin 4 oxide. So you have SnO2. That is the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio. Just like if you have a molecular formula C6H. 1206, this is a molecular formula. What's the empirical formula of this? So I believe that you can simplify this, right? Okay, so you will get C, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and then O. That is the empirical formula. But of, of obviously, if it is a ionic formula, we express that in empirical formula. Okay, getting the percentage composition will lead you also to the formula of the substance. Okay, to the correct formula of the substance. That is, um, you need some calculation. Now, let's review percentage composition. Again, this indicates the relative amount of each element in a compound. Percentage composition, relative amount of each element present in a compound. So the percentage, um, how do we get that? Mass of part divided by mass of a whole times 100. Okay, that's how we get percent by mass of a substance. Okay, so it's the mass percentage of each type of atom or element in a compound. Now, how do we do that? What are the steps that you're going to work um, to get the percentage composition of the elements in a compound? First, you need, again, 
to calculate the molar mass. Then you divide the sum total for each element's mass by the molar mass. And then you multiply by 100 to convert to a percentage. Okay, let's have a very simple formula of water and that is H2O. So what do you see here? F1, get the molar mass. So hydrogen, there are two atoms of hydrogen to one atom of um, oxygen. So two times 1.01 is 2.02. Then one times 16 because it has only one oxygen atom. And therefore we get the molar mass that is 18.02. What is step two? Mass of the part divided by mass of the whole. Mass of the part divided by mass of the whole. And we multiply it to 100. Mass of the part divided by mass of the whole, then multiply it by 100. Did you get it? So step three will give you the percentage. For hydrogen, 11.21%. Let me erase that one. Okay, for hydrogen, 11.21% of hydrogen. Here, 88.79% of oxygen. Okay, so water is composed of 11.21% hydrogen and 88.79% if you're going to get the summation of these two, you will have or you will get 100%. That is to check if the components are correct. One way of checking. Or, okay. So I hope uh, you're able to get that. Let's have another sample problem. Okay. Let's work on another sample problem. Okay. So let's make use of C is 12, so C is equal to 12 times 12.01. H is, I'm doing the shortcut method already, 22 times 1.01, and then oxygen um, 11 times 16.00 atomic mass, okay? So let's get 12 times, that's 1 144. 12 times 12.01 12 is equal to 144.12. Okay? Next, uh, this is 22.22. 22. So 11 times 16 is 176.00. We get the total mass or the molar mass of the substance. So 144.12 okay, plus 22.22 plus 176. Okay, so that gives us a 342.34 grams per mole. Kindly check if we got it. Okay, so what are we going to do with the molar mass? Divided it divided in each part. Divided in each part. So we have 342.34. Then you multiply it by 100. So let's try that. 144.12 divided by 342.34. Okay. What did you get there? Okay. I hope you're not just looking or watching the video. Try to pause this from time to time and then um, mimic what I'm doing here so that you get to understand. Times 100, so this is 42.10% to be rounded off to two decimal places. Exactly, that's 342.34 times 100, 342.34 times 100. Okay, so 
uh, 22.22 divided by 3 for 2.34. Uh, 3 for 2.34. Okay, times 100. I got here 6.49 percent. Okay, so I have 176 times, or shall I say, divide 3 for 2.34. Okay, times 100. Okay, so I have here 51.41 percent. So 51.41 plus 6.49 plus 42.10, then I have 100. So this is 42.10 percent is carbon. 6.49% is hydrogen and 51.41% is oxygen. So this is the percentage composition. Okay. I hope you were able to get that 